it's me, Ryan, back for a brand new video. And this week's interview, we're joined by Schnorr's number one, Greg Fleming. Talk me through your early years of being a footballer. How you doing, Ryan? You alright, pal? Um, yeah, so, I'll say, started off um, at Livingston as a young boy. I was there from under 15s onwards. Um, had two years there before I went um, full time. Um, also going full time, had some some really good players in our youth team. Um, like Robert Snodgrass, Graham Dorns, they were um, a couple of the young boys that were in the same youth team as myself. Um, and yeah, we had two good seasons when I was full time there. I got the quarter finals of the, the Scottish Youth Cup both years. Um, we got beat by. I think it was Hearts the first year and Dunfermline in the second, but to be fair, if we'd, if we'd had a right good chance, because as I said, in both seasons we'd done, done well in the league, um, beating both Rangers and Celtic and things like that, it was, we were always up near challenging, and I think that's that comes from, so I had my coach at the time, when I first started it, and the youth team was John McLaughlin, who ended up at Celtic for a while, and then when he left, we had them. Um, Probably one of the best coaches I've had in terms of telling you things straight it was Paul Hegarty, obviously the career he'd had. With Under United he was he was very good and he was very honest. Told you if you're good, told you if you're rubbish, so he was he was very good and I enjoyed the fact that he told you straight, it was nothing if you had done well in a game he told you that you you played well and if you were poor you were you're told you were poor, so um, he was obviously a big like, hang on influence on myself, but as well as the goalkeepers that I had at the time that I worked with was um, Alan Main, who'd been in Scotland squads and played for St Johnson, and I think he's one of the all time record holders, appearance holders there as well. Um, Roddy McKenzie come in, who was again had a good career and learnt a lot from him as well, and also Colin Meldrum, who'd been at um, Kilmarnock for a good number of years and then come to Livingston and again learning from them sort of guys was, was different class they'd always stay behind the training to help you and do things like that so I said it was a good it was a good learning thing for us as well and obviously I had a, a, a goalie coach as well a guy called Roy Baines who I actually still speak to now um, and I used to say that was, it, was, it was an excellent thing for a, a young boy leaving school to go into because it was a positive um, environment and things like that. Obviously at Livingston it didn't go, things happened and obviously went to administration the first year I was there full time but in a way that maybe actually helped me because I was, um, I'd went from starting that season as seventh choice goalkeeper and by the time Christmas had come round to my administration, I was third choice. So I was training the f as a, again at sixteen, seventeen year old. I was training the first team every day. So that was a a big thing, and I think it's one that I, I really enjoyed. You signed for Great Net in two thousand and five. You must have some stories for this time. Yeah. So obviously getting released by Livingston at the end of my my youth team. Um, it was one of them where I'm 18 year old thinking what do I do now and obviously I got the phone call from Gretna to go down um, and it was a bit of a not brain to be fair. Um, going down, staying full time and getting to work again with someone like Alan Main um, who'd been an influence on myself when I'd been at uh, Livingston so it was a chance to keep working with somebody who's had a very good career in the game, it was, it was silly not to. Obviously, getting down there, met likes of uh, David Matheson, another goalkeeper who was there, who, who was a very good goalkeeper as well. Um, so, with a good goalkeeper and goalie school there, the, the three of us. So, it was good. Obviously, I learnt a lot from them to get to train them every day, and it was uh, it was very, very well. There was also a lot of highs, a lot, a lot of highs there when you're there. You're, um, obviously, a team from it's in a be like League One. Now, getting to the Scottish Cup final, my first season there was, it's unheard of really. It's not um, like whatever we've done again. And then obviously what they've done as well, getting the promotions. 
all the way through the leagues from obviously the bottom tier up to the top again. That will never, I don't think it will ever be done again. So you look at Rangers tried it and they didn't manage it. So I think that's what shows you the sort of achievement that it was. And obviously it was it was very good. Obviously my second season there, um, I made my first team debut. I come on as a sub against Clyde, and then I started the following week against Hamilton away. And I also got to play in the, the Scottish Cup against Hibs at Easter Road, so it was all good. Obviously, the I, I thought I might have got a chance to play in the rest of the season. Um, uh, Alamein got suspended and I thought, well, there's a chance I might get to play. But they brought in Zibby Malkowski from Hibs and it was a bit different learning from someone like that because he didn't really have the best of English, so it was quite tough. I've been, Myself and a Polish lad try to train together on our own, um, and but then obviously got promoted, and then as I said it was one of them we got come back for pre season, and dear me, I've never seen so many trailers goalies in my life. I think with a new one coming in every set couple of days, I think all in all, counting it with twelve goalkeepers on trial over that one pre season, so there was a hell of a lot, and it was tough obviously to take as a young boy, um, thinking. They don't obviously rate you, but I kept my head down, keep working, kept working hard, and I had at this time it was Tony Keg had come in, and he was sort of giving us bits of advice, keep trying, keep keep going. You never know what can happen, you never know what's around the corner. Um, it looks like I was actually going to be heading out on loan that season, um, and getting on the SPL to Dumbarton, but it sort of fell through, and two weeks later I started the first league game of the season at. Um, against Falkirk so it was a bit of a whirlwind really because I'd gone from heart playing not being good enough to play in the championship to playing in the SPL so it was very different but I said it was something I'd never change ever because at, at that age there wasn't many goalkeepers at 20 year old playing like the Rangers, Celtic, Hibs Hearts and stuff so it's something I'll always be proud of. Obviously, there's, there's obviously there's the lows. Obviously, the the financial situation what happened with the club. Um, obviously, at the time I was only a young boy, so I didn't have any commitments really. I didn't I didn't have any mortgage or kids or that. So I think we went five six weeks without um, getting paid. So it was it was tough because you're coming out of training every day, and you're not sure what's going on, but you're still you're still expected to train and get on with things and but not know what was actually going on, so it's a bit of a pain. But as I said, looking back on my time, obviously I got the call up to Scotland 21s um, a couple of times, so obviously that's a, a high point for myself as well. And I think I was the first one to get called up for Scotland at Gretna, so obviously that was a proud moment. But as I said, looking back, the, the good times far outweigh the bad. And again, it's it's some hopefully. I still try and see how they get on now, but it's a place that I'll always always be happy and be proud of the fact that I played there. Looking at your career, I saw that you moved to Galway United. Why did you decide to move across the water? I so moving to Ireland. Um, so I'd been I'd left. Oldham in the, at the end of the January transfer window. So obviously living in Manchester at the time, like I was, I had um, I'd sort of spoken to Stockport County before I left Oldham. So I thought, when I obviously come to leave there, I thought, well, why not? Because I could stay in Manchester and go to Stockport. So that's one of them where I went and trained there for a couple of weeks and. Finally, when I come to sign the contract, they turned around and said that they couldn't afford to give me anything. So, <laughs> at that time, there was there was not really much else out there. It was uh, start starting Mar I come up to the start of March, and League of Ireland was obviously just start up. Uh, we were starting the season then, so I just seen it's a case of try something different, go and play from then until July, and hopefully see what else could come up after that. And I said it was great, it was good to go out and play um, every week, games on a Friday night, which was a wee bit different, not something I'd been used to. 
and I uh, said we can't to play and at the time um, Shamrock Rovers who end up in the Europa League that season so playing against teams like that it was, it was, it was very good but again things changed very quickly um, they'd gone from having a, a change of ownership and that the fans took over and I don't think they had a clue really what they were doing because <laughs> literally as soon as we started um, there was problems of getting paid and in the end I think I left I left obviously the, the start of July and the transfer window back opened up and hadn't been paid in three months so it was one of them I just while it was a good experience to go out and play, the, the place was a bit of a shambles to be honest with you and, and then I was happy to get back over um, back over to England to get playing again. Then you moved to England playing for some great clubs. Talk me through this time. I saw when I obviously I left, um, got away as I said at the start, sat in July to get away. I ended up signing for Chesterfield, so it was, a, it was a good club. It was one of them where, having been at Oldham, it was my old Oldham manager who was actually there in charge, so he'd um, got in touch. And I went down, signed a, I was there for a year. Obviously, got to we got to Wembley and that, that year I was there. I got to play in the, the Johnston's Paint um, Trophy. I was on the bench for that game, but it was a good experience. Obviously, I wasn't uh, getting to play, go there. And, see that stadium because it's it's very nice and it's it'd be nice to also have been played but it was one of them where um it was a, a good day all round and obviously we ended up winning that but unfortunately at the end of that season led to we got relegated um and then obviously due to being relegated there was obviously cuts at the club and i think there was about 10 of us got released so unfortunately that's how that that ended and I went to Grimsby Town after that, which was a, a very good club in the conference. Um, but no, it was it was really good and really enjoyed my time there. Um, uh, training every day again and again that season got to it was the FA Trophy and I've played most quite a few of the games in that. But then come the final, I was on the I was naming the the squad for it, so it was a bit of a pain. Um, doing all on playing other games then it come to the big game when you were out the team but it's not there's nothing you can do but as I said on a whole I really enjoyed my time at Grimsby and it was a, a very good club and you go the coach a guy called Steve Crowson who is now at Lincoln is, was a very good coach and he also helped when not playing keeping spirits up and whatever else and I said it was just a, a good club all around a lot, a lot of good players and good lads it's probably up there were one of the best dressing rooms I've played in with in terms of good lads and honest pros and stuff. But obviously that season we come we end up finishing the playoffs but we didn't go up and again it was one of them where cost cutting come in and um a, a a large chunk of the squad got released and obviously I was one of them and ended up going to Carlisle United again. I was one name. It was I moved back up sort of this area, um, up Tannin. So I set up um, sort of roots from there, and it was it was a decent enough club. Um, had a a decent enough year there, but got to play in the FA Cup. I actually got to play a bit of Sunderland and things like that, playing against a Premier League team at the time, um, which was obviously probably the. the uh, season highlight for myself playing there against like so Adam Johnson and players like that who are like, internationalists in every position so it was it was a, a tough game but we actually gave us done ourselves quite a bit of credit we got beat 3-1 but they scored a third goal I think in injury time and that was obviously a, a break from us pressing and uh, trying to get an equaliser but all in all that season it wasn't the best personally um, I didn't really enjoy it there but it's one of them where I was I didn't enjoy it as much as what I probably could and should have done. After what happened that great now, could you believe that happened again at Celtic Nation? I so after after leaving Carlisle, um 
I was actually thinking of giving football up. Um, I was at that, that year, I didn't really enjoy it. And I was like, can I be bothered playing football anymore? Um, I wasn't enjoying it, but a guy called Willie McStay phoned me, asking me about what I was thinking about, because obviously he was manager at Celtic Nation, asked me what I was thinking, would I be interested? And as I said, I spoke to him and I, was, I told him that I'm not sure I need to think about it. Um, I ended up actually going down to Celtic Nation Stadium, I went down to meet him, and as I said, he spoke away, and I kind of I was <laughs> ended up in a meeting for about two hours with him, um, just talking about football and whatever else. And um, he played obviously a big part in making me go there, and I was one I was actually really looking forward to because um, the club was not like it's going to be challenging. I was going to be playing every week, and I thought it was be worth away worth my while. Didn't need to move either, so uh, moved my family. That so it was certainly one that I, I was fancied and. I said, well, he made a, played a big part in me going. But then, let's say, a month later, it was, um, he phoned me and he said, uh, look, just to let you know, I'm away. Uh, the guy who was the chairman of the club had uh, not done something with the investor. He wouldn't, I don't know, I don't know the full ins and outs, but he'd done something and the investor guy had ended up pulling out his, um, his money. So it was a case of, anybody who was on a contract was basically free to go so as the timing wasn't the best because it was at the start of August when obviously the football season was starting anyway so it sort of left you with, with nothing really because every team more or less had all their, their players and that so obviously it was when you're going oh dear I mean not again obviously and it was just unfortunate that it did happen because it could have been a, a club that went quite far and you just never know how much a part you could have played in helping that happen. You moved back to Scotland for playing for Steny before you moved to Ayr. Did you enjoy this time? So obviously signing with, with Steny was come about with obviously um, Jack Hamilton they signed him on loan and when Rangers played Hearts Neil Alexander broke his cheekbone so obviously Hearts recalled Jack Hamilton back from the loan spell, so obviously it left them um, now looking for a goalkeeper and obviously the goal coach at the time, a guy called Robert Glenn, who again I'm still in contact with now, a very good guy, obviously he done a lot for me during my time working with him and I'll always be thankful to him for getting in touch with us because at the time it was a bit of a panic because it was looking like there was nothing out there, there was no clubs really looking for goalkeepers, so it was one name where when he phoned us, um, I thought it'd be worth a try going to see how it went. Um, and to fair going, it was the best thing I could have done because it got me back playing um, week in, week out. Uh, it got me back enjoying playing football, but also enjoying going to training, working with everybody, like the players. And obviously, I said, Robert was put you through I think, your good sessions and that, so I couldn't complain. And I said, one way, I think it was my third game there, we played Hearts in the Cup and I had quite a good game in that one and so I just went from there where my form just picked up and obviously on a personal note obviously it was a very good season because I got um, I think I got four or five Player of the Year awards so it was it worked out perfectly for myself obviously from a, a club point of view we scraping relegation and obviously we ended up Staying up with um, the playoffs and um, beating Queen's Park in the final, but it was very a an, nervy an time. But as I said, as a club, they couldn't do enough for you, and it's one that I definitely enjoyed and loved being there. Um, it was just a shame come the end of the, the season that we couldn't actually come to an agreement on a new contract. Uh, obviously, Bomber. Brian Ferguson, the manager, had, had offered us a contract and things had been ongoing. Um, but it was one thing where they couldn't come to a compromise, and that's where um, I ended up leaving and signing for, for Air United. I'll cast your memory back to May 15th, 2016, where you broke my heart. Taught me for this game. Yeah, that game, the 15th of May. Yeah. It was um, 
to be fair, that the game, the second leg, playoff game, is probably one of the worst games. Obviously, I've watched it back, and it's probably one of the worst games I've ever seen in my life. Um, obviously, you could tell it was two teams who were very nervous, but also I think we were that poor. We dragged Stranraer down to turn it into just a, a rubbish, meaning rubbish game. Basically, it was it was that bad. But obviously, preparations for the first game. Um, I was actually an injury doubt because obviously we played um, Peterhead in the semi final of the playoffs and in the last minute uh, over stretch try to keep a pass back in play and um, tweak my, my left hamstring so obviously I was a bit touching goals to whether I'd be able to play and obviously I had to stra strap my, my hamstring up a lot to get through the game um, like the first leg was it was a miles better game, and I think, obviously, I think it was a good crowd down at uh, Stair Park, and it was it was good. It was a decent enough game, I think. I think, obviously, from what I can remember of that, I think I made one of the the best saves I of my, that I can remember in my career from Ryan Thompson. Um, the ball broke to him on the edge of the box, took a touch on his chest, and he volleyed it. And thankfully, I got my, my left hand tip round the post. Um, but I said it was we were one 0 down, um, and Ross Dock ended up scoring. I think it was the last kick of the ball to get us a a one 0 draw for the first leg. And then obviously, I said the second leg. It was a big crowd at Somerset. I think it was four and a half to five thousand fans here, and they got to see one of the worst games of football ever. Um, but at the end of the day, I think. It doesn't really bother you how, how bad the game was for ourselves because we end up obviously getting up um, with the penalty shootout. And obviously, I've been asked a lot about the penalty shootout, and I'll always say the same that the goalie coach who I'd had at Stemmings Mule, Robert Glenn, he'd actually come to aid as well. And he done a lot, a lot of research and the build up to the playoff games. and he'd gone back years over where penalty takers might take put their penalties so obviously when the likes of obviously Paul Kearney stepped up and Jimmy Longworth I sort of had a very good idea where they were going and I say thankfully they went the, the side that we'd spoke of and I was able to make the saves um, obviously with David Barron I did not have a clue where he was going and obviously he's put it down the middle and I managed to get my toe on it and the fair, I was obviously delighted making the save, but my god, the pain going through my, I mean, up my foot after that was was very sore. But obviously, then Ross Dockery stepped up and hit the post, and you're going, oh no, no here we go. And obviously, Willie well, scores his pen, so it's then you're maybe thinking, going, oh, what's going to happen here? But say, thankfully, big Andy Graham put his penalty away, and obviously, from an air's point of view, it was. It was brilliant to get promoted um, up to the championship because that season up there was some very good teams. Obviously, with like Hibs, Dundee United, uh, St Mirren, Falkirk, all in the league. So it was brilliant, and the chance of playing against them was was really really good. Why did you decide to move from Ayr to Peterhead? Did you enjoy your time up north? This is the first time somebody's actually asked me about um, how it come about me leaving Ayr um, for Peterhead. I've said it's been a lot said it was for work commitments, but actually it wasn't for that at all. Um, this is the first chance I've had to explain. So how it come about was I've said at the end of that year when the championship and obviously we got relegated to Ayr back down to League One. The club made the decision to go full time and obviously when I met Ian McCall and spoke, um oh, no. it was one of them he sort of said to us, Look, this is what's happening and all obviously with your work. But um, we'd like you to stay and so from there obviously we'd come to 
an agreement where I'd be training certain days um, full time. I'd, I'd been all okayed with my work and everything was going to be fine. And I said I agreed. Everything was all agreed. And I think it was either the I can't remember if it was the night before the or the, the the morning of that I was meant to go up to sign the contract. Obviously, McCall got in touch to say that they could no longer offer me what had been offered, and there was a a large part of the agreement of the the wage being taken off. So it'd been one of them. It had been going on and on and on for quite a while, and it got to the stage where I just had enough, and I thought, um, it's sort of taking taking the mick a bit, and I just felt maybe a, a fresh start, breaking it, getting away from there was maybe the best thing for us because. It wasn't. I didn't want to leave, but I felt personally from, it was sort of forced upon us because any time things were getting agreed, um, the goalposts were then getting cheap, getting moved, and uh, it was just getting very frustrating. So that's what um, led to me to to leave here, and I was end up going up to Peterhead, and I, you know, it's a, obviously it's a, a bit of a travel, but as a club, they could not do more for you. Um, there's some great folk behind the scenes there. Um, who would do anything to do to help you, and it was it was one of them where there was obviously good players in that area as well. Um, and we got to I think we lost we lost out in the league by a point, and then we obviously got beat in the playoff final by Steny. And I think over the, the the last I think it was the last twelve games we lost one game in that that run, and obviously we didn't end up getting promoted. For the league, when the league and then didn't win, obviously didn't lose, we lost in the playoffs as well. So it was a uh, frustrating, obviously end of the season. But then that was one time where it made you even more determined the following season when I was agreed to go back that to go obviously go one better. And obviously the following season we managed to do that. Um, obviously took it right to the last game. I think we only had to win one one game at our last. Uh, three or four, I think it was. Meant that we kept losing last minute goals, and um, obviously it wasn't so good. But obviously we got there in the end. Won the league at Hamden, um, beating Queens Park two 0 So that was obviously a relief. And then also also come up to League One to be playing against like say, obviously Strenard and Falkirk and things like that. So it was good. I said it was a good club who couldn't do enough for you, but. Obviously, when the the pandemic sort of set in and whatever else it come to, obviously the end of the season and unfortunately for the the how how it ended at Peterhead because it was very poorly handled in my opinion. Um, things were sort of made up and uh, I was sort of hung out to dry a bit. Uh, of how it, what happened, so it was one of those things. But uh, as I said, looking back on the whole, it was a, a good place to be, and I, I actually really did enjoy playing for for Peterhead. You signed for Snor this season. Why did you decide to make the move? I said, yeah, when I, I agreed to sign for Snor, it was one of them where I had been in contact. I've been in touch with Eric for a long time. Um, also since. Uh, my time at air, I've sort of spoke to him a text message here and there or whenever we spoke seen been playing against obviously Sonaris we've had a, a good catch up and, and chatted away and stuff so it was one of where it was looking like Max was obviously going to be leaving and Eric got in touch with myself to ask what my sort of plans were for next season or the season just coming up that we've just been playing in just now so it asked me what, me what I was thinking and it was one of them I, I, at the time, I was I was unsure, um, but obviously after what had happened at Peterhead, um, uh, obviously I, I was then decided I was going to be leaving, and obviously I spoke to Eric to say, look, I've left Peterhead, um, so if there, obviously if they're still interested, then obviously I would be interested in speaking with the manager. Obviously, the manager got in touch with myself, and we spoke on the phone a few times, and then. I went and met him, and I said oh, everything that he said. Obviously, I, I I liked what he said and stuff, and obviously seen the players that he was signing as well. So it made it um, quite an easy decision. Also, I spoke to uh, Willie Gibson, who's obviously a, a really good friend of mine. Um, 
and he was obviously said that it was a, a good place to play football and there's when you're enjoying and it's going good there, there's, there's not many better places to be playing. So obviously they make, recommended me very highly to if I got the chance to sign to, to sign. So obviously then that entailed what Eric and the manager both said it was a, a no brainer really because you want to be challenging and up the top end of the league and obviously after obviously last season at Bearhead well, it was a, a bit of a relegation fight so you want to be trying challenging again so that's how it come about and obviously I signed and it's been it's been good. I've enjoyed it so far. In two thousand and seven two Chose to play for Scotland under 21s. Did this make you proud? So yeah, getting called up for Scotland under 21s was something I was very proud of. Um, as I said earlier, it was something that I was, it was the first one at Gretna to get for it to happen too. So, of course, I was proud. Um, but to once in terms of the game, I think they went to Holland and we ended up getting beat 4 0, I'm sure. Um, but I didn't actually play. I was uh, I was on the bench, so in a way it was probably a good thing I didn't get to play because watching the game, Holland were, were very good and we had actually some right good players um, in the, the squad, obviously it's, uh, Hammy was in it, Jamie Hamill, um, Stephen A. Smith was there, uh, I'm, trying to, what, I'm trying to remember who else was, um, off the top of my head I can't really remember, and, but all I, what, what I can remember was Holland were, were very good that night and um, they had some, some right good players but I said it was something I was very proud of and it was it was um, something I look back fondly on. What's your ambition for the rest of the career? Actually for the, the rest of my career I'm not too sure. Um, obviously I'm 34 now so I'm not too sure how many years I've got left of playing um, and obviously all I do is I take each year as it comes. As long as I'm still enjoying playing football, then obviously I will keep playing. And as long as uh, the body and the legs are um, still able, then I'll, I'll try to keep playing as long as I can. But obviously it's what I enjoy, playing football, obviously, as long as I can. But obviously in this pandemic at the minute, it's a bit unfortunate because obviously we've stopped and obviously we had hoped to be back playing in that again by now. But unfortunately it's, it's still not happened. But... I said for the rest of my career, I'm not too sure. I'll take each year as it comes, and when we know what's happening, if we're going to finish this season off, or if it's getting stopped, and then obviously I'll take stop from there and see, speak with the club to see if they want to keep me or or what. And then that's when I'll I'll base a decision from there. So we'll see what happens. But as I say, that's what I keep playing as long as I can and. Um, as long as uh, I said the body and the, the legs allow me to, I'll, I'll play as long as I can and see, see where it takes me. Who's best played against and why? I would have to say um, Michael Owen is the best player I've played against. Um, he was coming back from one of his knee injuries and he was playing for Newcastle at the time and we played um, at Gretna we played a friendly against Newcastle at their training ground and for somebody who was sort of his first game properly back he was so sharp in and around the box his movement his, and stuff was, was ridiculous and as you can see obviously from his career he's had um, <laughs> some of obviously his finishing was, was quite good as well obviously I played against him again later on in my career when I was at Oldham we played a, a game against my United at their training ground. It's like a bounce game against I've said that I'm there and again in that game the movement um is finishing again is ridiculous. So I think I'd have to say that he was the best sort of striker I played against. Um obviously you look at the career he's had, um he was a, a very, very, very good player. What's the best 1-11 players you've played with? So obviously for the, my eleven for the, the best players that I've played with, um, I'm going for formation of a 4-2-3-1. And in goals, it was actually quite a tough choice because there's been quite a few um, good goalkeepers that I've sort of worked with. And 
So I had a choice of either obviously Mark Crosley, Mark Gillespie or Jordan Pickford. Um, but for me, the best one it was Mark Crosley, who I was with at Oldham and Chesterfield. He, uh, he was there when I first went down to England and somebody for obviously the older generation who's played at Nottingham Forest for most of his career in the English Premiership and stuff. Played in Europe for them and was also a Wales internationalist. Um, also a really good guy, so I'll go for Matt Cross as my goalkeeper. Um, right back, I've gone for Nicky Devlin, who I'm sure many of the Stranraer fans will remember from being at Air United um, when I was there. And obviously, Nicky had everything he needed to raise for a full back. He's big, strong, fast could get up and down the pitch easily and he was also a good player. Um, for left back I've gone for Joe Jacobson who I played at Oldham with who is now the captain at Wickham in the English Championship. Now this guy, his left foot was unbelievable. Um, he's probably got the best left foot I've seen and for me he's just not a good athlete up and down the pitch and deliveries from set plays were second to none. The two centre halves have gone for Sean Gregan, who was a centre half when I was at Oldham. Um, another guy who's played a lot of his career in the English Premiership um, and he was just a very good player. And to be fair, the, the year when obviously we played together at Oldham, <coughs> we played against like, the Leeds, Huddersfield, Leicester, and there wasn't one striker who got the better of him. Um, he just basically used to bully the strikers and he was he was very good. And the other centre half were going for Peter Murphy, who Stranraer fans all remember for being centre half at air and obviously currently the Annan manager. And Murph was a very good centre half, good ball player as well, so I think them two together would, would um complement each other quite well. For me too centre midfielders have gone for Kyle Norton, McNaughton, who is currently playing for Swansea in the Championship. He came along to Gretna when I was there and he could just tell straight away from the first training session when he was there how good a player he was and the fact that he could play right back, left back, centre mid or up front sort of shows, again, he was very versatile but, also, but for me, his best it was when he played in uh, centre mid. And alongside him, I've gone for Dale Stevens, who is now at Burnley. He played in the Premiership for a long time at Brighton. Um, I played with him at Oldham when obviously I first went there. And again, he was somebody you could tell straight away was a very, very good player. Um, I think he liked to model his game on Steven Gerrard. But again, Dale was a, a very good player. Now for the, the three attacking midfielders, I've gone for Tom Lawrence. Um, he came along to Carlisle when I was there from my United and he was ridiculously good. Um, he was too good for League One, even at that young age when he came. And there was a good few defenders got tied up in knots by him. I think he's playing at Derby now, but and he's a Wales internationalist as well. So he was a very good player. On the left side, I've gone for, again, a lad that I played at Oldham with called Chris Taylor, who, again, he was, when I first went there, he was sort of like the next best thing coming through. You know, he was getting linked to a moves for one, two million pound like, at the time. Thankfully for us at the time, he never materialised, but maybe not for him. Um, he still went on to have a good career playing for Alexey Millwall and uh, Blackburn in uh, the English Championship, but he was two-footed, very direct and very good in the air, so he was a, a good player. For the central one, um, it be one for a lot of the, the older folk to remember from playing, he's played down south and he also played in Scotland for a spell, it was uh, Dean Windass, he come along to Oldham when I was there, I think he was 40 at the time, and his, maybe his legs weren't quite as good as what they were, but his football brain was was very, very good and ability wise he was very good. Um some of you remember the goal he scored uh, at Wembley for Hull against Bristol City in the playoff final. He used to do that every day 
in training and again he was just he was a top guy as well. And for the striker I've gone for Lee Hughes from Oldham as well. Um now Hughes he's obviously played he's played in the Premiership and the Championship for a lot of his career. He's had a few obviously other things have happened with him but a lad who could do nothing for eighty nine minutes in a 0 0 game, pop up and score a goal, get you the one 0 win. I think my season at Oldham, uh, when he was there, I think he scored 18 goals by February and then he picked up a few injuries and then went out on loan because he wouldn't agree a new contract. So I think that sort of tells you what he was just an all round good goal scorer. Thanks, Greg, for this week's interview. I hope to see you at Stair Park soon making the best saves. And everyone, remember to like, subscribe, and share, and hit the bell symbol next to the subscribe button so you get notified when I post another video and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.